Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video and hopefully you guys watched my previous video talking about all the nonsense in the crypto space right now. But if you didn't, make sure you go ahead and check that out. And let's today talk a little bit more about coins which are fundamentally just good and with the idea in mind that crypto would just keep on expanding forward and just grow to the freaking moon pump like a freaking... I, I wanted to say some. Not going to say it. All right. I don't have the perfect analogy for something that's going to pump except for... Uh, yeah, let's... Uh, Skip that one. It's, uh, maybe there's kids watching. All right. So my question of today is, are you still holding your crypto? Uh, XRP was quoted here because it did really well. But generally speaking, just I didn't really sell any freaking thing. I had one short position open for a little bit to make some juicy dollars. But that's basically it. I didn't sell. Not plenty to sell. If I go down, I'm going down. All right. That's I'm going down with the ship. Let's put it like that. I'm a true sailor. And I kind of wonder if you guys are too or if you've chickened out a little bit. Which again, no shame in if you say, hey, I'm cashing out my crypto because I think we're going down further. No shame in saying that. We're just on a different little plane. I don't believe so. And even if I do believe so, I honestly am not so sure I'm going to be mentally capable to sell right now and buy back cheaper. Um, when I know that if I'm selling it to USDT or whatever, there's always going to be this... 6% right now a year that's going to be deducted. Next couple of years might even be worse because of the entire situation that's already been messed up, the crazy increasing debt and whatnot. So I'm not so sure what the best method is, except for just going towards a stable coin that's staking for like a 12% or so. But then still think about it. 12% a year on your staking with potentially a 6% inflation with potentially a 2% tax or whatever that you have to pay on that, or maybe even more. Yeah, yeah. All right, next up for Chainlink in 2022. Link staking and internet of blockchains. Just want to quickly let you guys know, Link is by far one of the favorite cryptos in my arsenal right now because it's not really reliant on any new advancements in the markets or so, except for new investments in terms of DeFi. If there's any new crazy announcement in DeFi, there's a very good chance that Chainlink has already adapted towards it or that Chainlink is an integral part of it. They've really thought of every single different way to do smart contracts. They've worked on different hybrid type of smart contracts. They're working a lot of them out in Chainlink 2.0. And remember, they want to expand too because they know every single part of the DeFi ecosystem. Chainlink is heavily undervalued, not really talked about too much. It doesn't have a crazy strong community like a lot of other projects like XRP, a um, ADA, VET, XLM, and whatnot do. But honestly speaking, guys, this is honestly, from the core of my heart, one of the best crypto projects that I don't nearly have enough money into, but they're very good. And apparently here, uh, they're, they're started out by providing cryptocurrency price data from a handful of sources to DeFi protocols like Aave and whatnot. But these days, it consists of a lot more. These guys are so big. Link is not a small feat anymore, not one you can throw around anymore. These guys are huge, huge, huge. Um, I know a couple of people that work there, by the way. We right now have also seen the ex-Google CEO has joined as an advisor. These guys are not playing around. Just quickly letting you guys know. But more things are coming up for them as well, which is exciting. So I'll update when we get any more uh, big updates. Now, Vitalik proposed a new multidimensional Ethereum fee structure. I want to quickly add two things together. One is saying I'm actually a pretty big holder of Ethereum. I've shown multiple different videos where I say Ethereum is kind of dumb. It's because it is. Right now, if you want to transact some and it costs you 50 bucks, 100 bucks or so, it's just stupid. But that doesn't mean the longer term for Ethereum is not exciting. Also, there were a couple of misconceptions between John Deaton and what he thought about, X, uh, about, about Ethereum, basically. A lot of people think he's against Ethereum or that since Ethereum got a free pass, that Ethereum is all of a sudden bad or something. That's not it. It's just that we all believe that cryptocurrency should receive the same chances or the same treatment. And Ethereum was just treated a little bit more preferentially than others were. It's just the way it's going right now. So one of the things that does pop up in my mind is, how can I explain to you all that I am bullish? Well, let me tell you like this. If they fix the fees, which can happen with Ethereum's 2.0 upgrade, which can happen in a couple of months, they're definitely a lot better. And they're so heavily used that they can really get some crazy pump going still, whatever, at one point of this year. For Chainlink, I honestly believe tripling, quadrupling or so in terms of price would, would kind of be on my little target. Because, as I said before, it's going to stay undervalued because it's just not a project that goes into the spotlight too much until they change stuff around, which we don't yet know. With Ethereum, though, it's so on the front lines already. If we see a $20,000 Ethereum price, nobody would really be like, wow, that's crazy. People would be like, oh, yeah, logical. Yeah, seems fair. Same thing for how it just reached, reached a couple of thousand bucks right now. If you told me this a couple of years ago, I'd slap you in the face for trying to trying to make my head with all this nonsense. Right now, it's like, oh. Yeah, oh, $4,000 per Ethereum? Okay, that's a good, it's okay price. $3,000 per Ethereum? That's a steal. Where in a couple of years ago, if you told me it would be over 100 bucks, it'd be like, ooh, that's uh, 
Ooh, you sure about that? Ooh. No, okay, let's not say 100 bucks. We all knew that. But let's say 500 bucks. So I would be like very surprised if it, if it did that within five years. <laughs> it's kind of funny how things have changed, huh? Then I've been looking around, man. All my days. If you look on Crypto Panic, one of the websites I sometimes use their, uh, uh, let's put it sometimes use. The comments here are very often funny, you know? Terra slash Luna, Avalanche, Avex, and four additional Ethereum rivals mounting serious challenge to ETH in 2022. JP Morgan analysis. Let me say it like this. Every single DeFi crypto, from some perspective, is in direct competition with Ethereum, even though they all have a unique little factor. They're all competitors to each other because you're going to use one or the other, or sometimes both, but generally speaking, one or the other. And any money that you lock up on one protocol, you can't use on another. So it's a, it's a one-to-one thing. One of the safest options, I guess, is something like a Uniswap, which uh, can, for example, be on multiple chains, which is actually be really nice. And there's a couple of DeFi, I guess, um, providers that work for multiple chains and i guess those are also kind of unaffected because they use uh, all of them but the layer ones yeah they're all in competition with each other directly it's funny how, how a lot of these guys are commenting like there should be ways to liquidate bears <laughs> yeah i don't know a lot of the pulse chain stuff a lot of the hex stuff i also often see i'm not too sure about why people are so excited about that if you guys know anything about pulse chain or hex let me know in the comments section down below uh, but analysts at global banking giant JP Morgan say that Ethereum competitors would challenge the top altcoins decentralized finance dominance of the crypto markets this year. In a recent report, analysts led by JP Morgan managing director Nikolaos <sighs> Why Pen Penigirtzoglu say that ETH's seventy percent market share of the DeFi space will continue to drop because of the blockchains. Well, generally speaking, they're talking about Ethereum's dominance dropping because there's others that are taking over. So definitely a, a valid argument to be made for that. But I'm generally bullish on all of them because they all stand a good chance of just being the top as they all have their own benefit and you don't know why one would use the other over the other. You know, Luna, really crazy with the UST, really popular, a lot of nice burning mechanisms. Avalanche, really unique structure in the way they've built themselves, just really increasing in terms of growth in every sector. Uh, but there's also Cosmos, for example. All those guys are just growing rapidly for their own solid reasons, I guess. We should put it like that. Then, little talk here. Over 200 billion bucks leaves crypto market in a week. Sharp volatility continues. Yeah. Crazy volatility, crazy fear. Is that a bad thing, though? I wouldn't say so. Uh, because on the other end, we also have over 5,300 Bitcoin bob at three of the lar largest Bitcoin whales on January 7th. Whales are hoarding, billionaires are hoarding. We all know it. It's just that people are trying to portray their own best interests. So, whenever you see an article like this, understand that it's most likely biased, as there's also most likely quite a lot of big whales who are selling. So, they're just drawing out here saying, oh, three big whales are buying. Yeah. But how much have they sold and how much are others selling? It's hard to say that from these statistics, you know? So you have to look a little bit further into it all the time. But they're not doing that in this article. So not trusted, at least from my perspective, it is. By the way, guys, let me quickly say none of this stuff is financial advice, not legal advice. Just quickly letting you guys know. Everything I say here is my own opinion. And even though I think my opinion is the, you know, the, a, a, a really a one that stays close to, the, to objective truth, uh, I can be wrong on things. So... Just want to quickly let you guys know, I'm not a guru, I'm not claiming to be one, just a random guy on the internet who does crypto, and I think we do a lot of research and that type of stuff, so we know a lot of stuff, but definitely not everything, and we can definitely be wrong. All right, Bitcoin poised to finally break 100,000 bucks in 2022 with more billionaires flocking to the asset class following fiat fears. Facts, um, a lot of billionaires are going for crypto, we know that. Uh, it's being a curse lot more than a couple of years ago, facts. Uh, fiat fears, facts, we now know in terms of inflation, it's actually confirmed as well that there should be fiat fears. And it's also just a logical response, you know. I don't really know, understand really why the crypto markets are going down. I still can't really fathom why it's, it would be the nice or the best correlation or why it's the, the actual uh, way things are going, except for just manipulation. That's only, the only thing I can put it right there. That some people have a narrative that they want to push, and that's why these things are moving this way. I just can't fathom the fact that crypto prices would move down in a sense where just the heaviest inflation number has ever been included. Bitcoin is meant as a measure against inflation, so to speak. I don't, I don't understand. I, I really don't. So from that perspective, I'm still betting big on Bitcoin. It just makes logical sense for all of us to um, to see that as the, the truer narrative. Let's put it like that. All right, all right, all right. Let's move on. A couple of things. So John Dean here wanted to kind of prove himself right. I want to quickly um, put a couple of points on that. He wanted to say here real quick, hey, I'm not really against um, Ethereum. I'm just stating here that they didn't get the fair treatment. And there's actually a really long thread, which I recommend you guys to uh, to talk about here. He doesn't have anything against Ethereum, and I'm personally a pretty big holder of it as well. I think he's also pretty big holder. That's what he said in this little uh, slot of his. I, I read it a little while ago. I don't remember every single detail of it. But from the start, I've argued it absolutely makes zero legal sense to give ETH a free pass but claim XPR securities, which is what he's talking about. He's not necessarily saying ETH is bad or, or anything along those lines. He's never been attacking uh, ETH. 
to the platform of technology. Today's XP is not a security. Likewise, I don't believe today's ETH is a security. Some folks have criticized me for attacking ETH. They, they argue I shouldn't bring ETH up at all. But as I also agree with John, it's a valid point to make because why basically disassociate from reality uh, when saying, no, the rules are clear. For example, Ethereum is, is, is clear when Ethereum, of course, had really different treatment and then otherwise also claim that ETH is not properly regulated when in reality it kind of feels like that way because they kind of make it that way. But then they say it's clear, but then they also kind of make sure that it's not clear. I don't know. It's such a vague little space, which is why I really believe John is on the right path, which is why I'm so eager to interview him. But uh, sometimes these things take a little bit of time, guys. I'm not sure when we're going to get it done. I'm, I'm trying my best, so I'll give you an update when I have an update from uh, from their side. So, you know, I am, uh, I'm down whenever. Uh, Jeremy Hogan put this up here. Let's quickly read. Jeremy said a case came out last month that marginally helps the SEC's position in its motion to strike Ripple's fairness defense. So the SEC filed it without, or what the court, it was in a very different stage of litigation. And the standard is completely different than the SEC v. Ripple case. Only thing I have to say right here, guys, is stating the obvious here. Understand that whenever something comes out in the Ripple VSC lawsuit, I'll post it on my channel. But understand as well that whatever we've seen here is not necessarily that good for it, uh, for the SEC. They've been trying, trying, trying to basically put some dirt on Ripple's name, but it's not really working. Every single odd is looking in Ripple's favor as of this point to just get a win out of this and come out of this prestigiously, um, be beautifully, just put it like that. And so I honestly still am sticking to my own truth, which is XP is going to win. XP is going to pop off to at least 12 bucks, hopefully uh, even more towards the area of 24 or so. It's going to go crazy. I honestly believe in that truth and I'm going to stick to it because everything points towards that direction. Then again, it doesn't always have to go that way because in the crypto market right now, every single thing is pointing towards high inflation, higher soaring crypto markets. It's not happening though. So sometimes it takes time. Bank XP shared this. Never mind the Ripple lawsuit. Digivault becomes the first accredited custodian to support XRP. Nice. Just a small little announcement. Rather nice. Never going to use this myself, I guess, but it's it's good to see it happening. I don't know what else to tell you guys about that. Then, another crypto article. Crypto John Deaton. He talked about this already. Let's see here. Uh, 440 million XP wired by major players with 225 shifting in a single lump. I'm going to do some research on this one uh, because at the end of the day, I've told you all, any transfer here is not of any importance unless you know exactly what goes on behind it. And as of this point, we can't really extrapolate what this is supposed to mean for the for any other metric because we don't know how much the inflow was or what exactly these shifts came from or went to. They're talking about some exchanges, right? But that is still so vague still. Is it a person? Is it the exchange itself? Are they doing this because of, um, you know, just moving their money around? Are they doing it for a new venture? Are they doing it for this, that, this, that? Are they an ODL partner? Was it Ripple doing that? All these things matter. Is it going from in the exchange to out, just completely outside or something else? Every single part of that matters, which is why it's so difficult to draw conclusions out of this, which is why I'm going to tell you guys, a lot of money's been moving around. I think the majority of guys are actually hoarding, even though the narrative right now is, oh, sell, be scared. I think a lot of these guys are hoarding. Billionaires are getting into crypto because they know the inflation is so heavy that uh, they should look for alternatives. And you should see it this way. Having no exposure to crypto at all is scarier than having um, exposure to crypto, I think, because there's a very high chance that even though things might go down for a little bit, who knows, right? Long term, it's, it's the best thing to go in in terms of volatility. Mm, it's most likely to be pretty high. But in terms of return, I think long term, it's just the best thing we can go for. All right, that was it for my opinion. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you subscribe for more of these. And uh, adios amigos. No BS on this channel. Told you guys before.